I started off as a police cadet at the age of 18 in Washington, D.C. At that time, you could be 20 and be a sworn police officer. So at 19 and a half, I'm sitting in the police academy, really excited about becoming a police officer, and all of a sudden, I get drafted. For four years, I was in the Naval Reserves. I was an aviation metalsmith. I worked on C-130 planes. Then I found out about this other reserve unit that had a lot of police officers in it, but it was an Army unit. So I decided to transfer to an MP unit in Fort Meade, Maryland. I did that for another three years. After doing that, I continued my career as a police officer. So after five years in Washington, D.C., I took the exam for sergeant and got promoted to sergeant at a relatively young age. From there, I took the exam as a lieutenant. I would tell you that was a, uh, a real experience for me because I was determined that I was going to be a perfect lieutenant and I was going to get everybody to like me. That was my goal. Uh, I would tell you that it was the longest, maybe the hardest year, one of the hardest years of my life. I found out that being popular was a hard thing to do if, if you were going to hold people accountable at the same time. It became very clear to me that what was important was that you build relationships on respect. Uh, you hold people accountable that need to be held accountable and you acknowledge individuals who are do, doing good work that was doing good work. Um, eventually, I retired, actually, I retired at the age of 43 from the Washington, D.C. Police Department and was offered a job in public housing as the Director of Public Safety. I missed the D.C. Police Department. I left because I was frustrated, I was mad, I didn't like the politics, and I regretted it every single day. But uh, the chief, he got fired, and then they appointed an interim chief. The interim chief called me and asked me if I wanted to come back to the City Police Department as the number two person. I went back. Did that for a year, but I had applied for jobs and had gotten accepted uh, a job as the chief of police in Greensboro, North Carolina. I got hired in North Carolina to attempt to change the mindset of the executive branch. Everybody who knows me uh, knows that uh, I'm certainly about change and trying to do, trying to do things what I could think more effectively. Uh, so as a result of some of the things we were doing, I was asked to come to Louisville, the Southern Police Institute, to speak about organizational change. And Louisville was in the process of merging the county police and the city police. And I said, boy, that would be really exciting. It would be something different. So I applied for that job and actually got the job. We merged the department in about two and a half years, which was warp speed. Somebody called me about Denver. Went to a series of interviews. Here I am, three years later. If I only knew then what I know now. How many times have you heard that? Obviously, we're gonna to continue to look at our policies. I'm not being critical because I don't have all of the answers. I can't imagine how hard this is for the family. The biggest challenge is getting everybody on board to understand that our primary focus is prevention of crime. The reason why I've worked in so many different law enforcement agencies is that I've always gone to an agency that I believe, number one, fit philosophically what my beliefs were, uh, and that I believe needed to make some culture changes to, to be in a better position to provide services to the community. I have a strong philosophical belief about how policing should be done in America. I sincerely, with every fiber in my body, believe in prevention. And I believe in order for that to happen, uh, our greatest resource is our ability to connect with the residents. I've been doing this for 43 years. I still do it because I am passionate about what I think policing is to this country. You know, I don't hang out with the fellas, don't go drinking, I don't golf. The really only outlet I really have is bowling. There we go. It's like taking candy from a baby. One of my faults is I'm a very competitive person. The 300 is a perfect game. I have about 13 300s. You can get a string of strikes, three, four, five, six in a row. It's really a very satisfying feeling. I actually didn't start bowling until I was about 47. When we had moved from DC to North Carolina, we lived in an apartment, and right across the street from the apartment was a bowling alley. And it gave me an activity to do with my two sons. Here it is. I fell in love with it. A couple of things that I really enjoy about bowling <laughs> is you against the pins and the, and the conditions of the lane. When I'm having a really bad day, I imagine the pins have a lot of faces. The bigger the faces, the bigger the pins, the easier it is to get strikes. 
Ultimately, my goal is to get as many 300s as I can. I met a man, I think he's 82, and he bowled a 300. I'm hoping I can be where he's at. Oh! <laughs>